All right, let me welcome you to the Black Prospector Consulting program that you are about to start. Okay, so now this is kind of the base program that I like to use. To me, this is reminiscent of the good old days when I first really got into strength and conditioning and it was a just bare bones strength training routine that was based off of high intensity training or HIIT. Now that's different from high intensity interval training that you might've heard of. Now with HIIT training, what it was known, it was big back in the 80s and 90s. And if we really go back, I won't give you the whole history lesson, but if we really go back, it goes back into the late 70s, Arthur Jones and some more bodybuilders started using it. But it was different from all of the other routines that were out there being used because it was something that, you know, if we go back to the early days of bodybuilding, you had a lot of sets. People, guys did a lot of reps, a lot of sets, five, six, you know, maybe 12, 15. We'd do high reps to cut and low reps to bulk. That was kind of the philosophy. But then, you know, there was something with HIT where I'll say Arthur Jones started saying, what's the minimal amount of exercise that's needed in order to get a response? So I'm, I just gave you the brief 30,000 foot overview. Uh, so historians don't put things down into the comments because uh, I, I have a good idea of how HIT started, but this is just for the average person that doesn't need to know all that history. The point I do want you to know is this, that with HIT training, one of the key components that I think we missed out on people knowing how to train hard. So I'm not necessarily saying that I want you to go there and give it all you got until you puke in the basket. Now, we may have those days coming up in the, in the future, but right now it's going to be a lot easier than that. What I want you to do is get used to pushing yourself pretty hard to where you have what we're going to kind of new, use a terminology now that everyone uses. And I do think it fits well. Call R-I-R reps in reserve so for this workout i want you to go to a i i a r i r reps in reserve i want you to leave about two reps down that if necessary if i was standing there yelling at you saying you got to get it up you probably would be able to get it up you more than likely would be able to get it up so don't worry about going to complete and utter failure to where if you were doing a bicep curl, let me kind of go show here. If you were doing a bicep curl, and I, 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 I think I'm gonna be messing this up the whole time. A RIR would be doing the curl to, to failure will look like this. Maybe with one I, R, I, R, you probably would come up, try to bring it, wouldn't be able to do it, and you have to put it down. With just maybe leaving two, you might get here, it's hard. And then if you could do another one, you'd be able to do at least maybe two more. Let's go for that, okay? So we're not trying to get complete and utter failure. Just leave a couple in reserve. And that'd be easier to me saying R, I, R. Okay, so you're gonna leave a couple of reps in reserve. And with this workout, what I want you to do is focus on, let me pull it up here, it'd be a lot easier to explain. Well, I have it up here on the screen. Here's the base workout that I want you to follow for the next, uh, actually we can run this one really uh, for about a month. And we might run it further depending on how you respond. Now, what I want you to do is this. I want you, I think this is a great template that thankfully uh, I will actually put it down below. I'm, I'm so glad they created this template. Made it a lot easier for me than going through uh, managing all this on an Excel sheet, but I've done that and I still continuously do that actually. But I liked how they set this one up. Now, this particular workout was really actually from a guy named uh, Brian Haycock, but actually his, this is just pretty much a typical hit routine. Uh, and just the reps are, he designed the reps. And I think this is very good for where you're starting. The difference is, I want you to leave, again, two reps in reserve. So how does the workout look? Well, first you see, we're looking at a, a weekly schedule of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you're going to be, you're going to be complete, you're going to complete your training on the entire body one day, and you're going to do this three times in a week. Could you go four? You could, but then this is where we get into some issues with recovery. 
So right now, I want you to make sure you at least commit to getting three workouts in this week. Doesn't have to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could do Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and even Saturday, that would be your four week, but then alternate, still even Sunday off, then you go back to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you could even do a four, three, and keep alternating between those. But here's the key, the thing that I really want you to pay attention to as you go through this workout. The exercises you see here are going to be tailored just for you. I just left, we're, they're here for demonstration purposes right now. But what you're going to do, we're generally going to start out with some of the harder exercises first, because I figure you're going to be the most fresh when you walk into the gym. And so eventually that's going to change. But for right now, we're going to go with some of the hardest exercises first. And then what I want you to do over the next week, you may not know what your old 15 rep max is. Maybe you do. If you do, great. If you use an app, you know, I always recommend Gym Goal. Maybe you know what your 15 rep max is. You can look up on Gym Goal, see what it is and plug it in. So let's just say on the squat, your 15 rep max that you know, uh, we'll just make it an easy 225. You can plug that right there into the program. And then we ask the question, well, how much do you want to increase over the next month? How much do you want your squat to go up? I think it's pretty fair. You're just starting out. I think it's very fair as someone who is just starting to be able to really increase and move up, I'm gonna say 50 pounds. Now I'm just, again, making up these numbers, but quite honestly, if you are a novice or even an intermediate in a month, that may be possible, especially if you're just learning how to lift. Now, obviously for my advanced people, those folks who've been lifting a while, that is likely not gonna happen, especially as you're older. But again, for demonstration purposes, let's get some big numbers so we can get an idea of the big swings that take place. Well, now you see it calculates where your new 15 rep max be, 275. Let me make sure if I change this to there, you see it changes. So now it assumes my new 15 rep max is 275. Oops, I don't want to go up that much. There we go, 50 pounds. And we want to go up in increments of five. That means that when you add weight onto the bar, two and a half on each side. Now that's kind of difficult on the squat. Really, you probably won't notice if we do five pounds on each side. So let's do it in increments of 10. You're adding a five pound plate on each side of that 45 pound bar. And so for your first workout, you're going to do two sets of 15 with 185. When you walk into the gym on Wednesday, you're gonna use 185. When you walk into the gym on Friday, or we'll just say your third time going through this routine, 195, 205, 215. 225. And then when you come through this workout again, you'll have a 10 rep max. And now let's say if your 15 rep max is 225, maybe let's say your 10 rep max, let's uh, we make that up and let's say that's 240. And you want to increase that by, hmm, we'll say, uh, we'll keep it at 50 pounds, which means your new 10 rep max, wow, that'd be 290. All right, that might be kind of high. So let's kind of come up with something a little bit more realistic, shall we? Let's say you want to increase that by your 10 rep max by 25 pounds. Now we're looking at 265. And again, we're going to do it in increments of 10. So now you see you're doing 10 reps with 215, which might not be that bad for you because right here you actually did 15 reps with 215. 225, 235, so on and so forth. Now we get up to where the program gets hard. We come up here to your five rep max. Now understand, we're talking about the squat. If you're doing a squat until you are at your rep maximum, technically the bar is gonna fall on you. So always remember rep maximum really is contingent upon the exercise that you're doing. With something like squat is tremendously inaccurate. So really when you're squatting, you should always leave one or two reps in reserve. However, again, for demonstration purposes here and having the squat on here, let's just say if we're looking at our five rep max, if you're, if you can do 225 for 15, I'm going to guess and say you can do 305 for five reps. So if that's the case, and now you want to increase that, well, it might be a little harder. Maybe you want to increase this by 20 pounds. 
325 is your new rep max, again, increments of 10. And then you get an idea as you now start creeping up, 305, 315, 325. Now you've hit a new five rep max. And now here's where the program becomes no joke. Let's say your two rep max is 325. You want that to increase by 20 pounds. Now that will go up in increments of 10 where you'll use 355, 365, 375. Now on negatives for the squat, think about it. You don't wanna do a negative squat because that means you're sitting here with the bar on you and you're gonna resist it until you fall completely down. I'm, no, we're not talking about using the rack so you can set it down there. That's just extremely dangerous. That's why nothing is listed here for negatives for those days. But it is on some of the other exercises. So let's say a chest press. On a chest press, you actually could press it up or really in the case of doing a proper negative, what you would do is have someone else pull it up for you and then you would resist it all the way down as much as you can. Somebody else lifts it up for you and you will resist it as long as you can. Again, this accumulates a lot of stress. This is, it accumulates a lot of tension, causes a lot of stress on the system, but it's also a technique in order to get stronger. We may or may not use this for you. Let's play it by ear and see how you progress on the other three weeks, three or four weeks. But I just wanted to give you just kind of an overlay of what the program looks like. So you'll see we'll be working legs, then down the chest, your back, some delts. I wanna throw some abs in here and then we'll get into some arms. Now, so everything is getting hit. Your entire body is getting hit. Now, let me warn you of this. The first run through, and everyone tells me this, the first run through of this program is difficult because when you look at it, you're doing 15 reps of squats. It's kind of tight. Well, 15 reps of squats is rough, uh, but that's why we're using a weight that's really relatively light compared to what you would be able to do a 225. So you may even be so much of a novice, you do not even know what you can use for 15 reps. So what I want you to do is just focus on proper form. So you may be saying, well, man, what's the proper form? I have some YouTube video links over here for various exercises on really how to execute proper form on the particular exercise. So you let me know the movements that you're struggling with. Over the days, I'm gonna ask for you to send me video of you performing that movement. And when you do, I'm gonna critique it. And then I'll probably give you a video or maybe even make one myself on how you can improve your technique, okay? So again, we're going from larger muscle groups down to the smaller ones you're going to be making an incremental uh, increase in the amount of weight you lift almost every time you're walking in the gym. And because you haven't been there in a while, that's actually possible. But what I want you to do is get accustomed to now pushing yourself. Leave again, two reps in reserve. If it's calling for 15 reps, know in your mind, I could have done maybe 17, maybe even 20, but I could have gotten 17. Reps in reserve get a little, I'll say uh, a little more fuzzy when we're talking about higher reps because sometimes the burn gets you or maybe you get lower back fatigue on something like the squat. But in the case of something like a barbell curl, when we're talking about one or two reps, well, you have a pretty good idea. Obviously two reps in reserve means you wouldn't get any reps up. So that's what we're gonna play around with it. And it's like, look, you only have two reps to do, get those two reps out and see how much you can use. That's why it doesn't come until you're what? really a month into the program, one, two, three, four weeks into the program. By now, we should know really how strong you are and what you're capable of doing. So where it's not that taxing. Okay. So again, last time, I'm going to say it again. The key element of this program is to get you used to training hard, leaving two reps in reserve. And I want you in the gym at least three days in during the week maximum of four days in the week, but even if you do four, try to leave a day of rest in there between routines. Now, for those of you who are, let's say under 35, you may be able to go do this program on back-to-back -back days. For those of you over 35, or maybe with a little bit more experience with pushing yourself that hard, you're probably gonna to be too sore to go back into the gym the next day. That's okay. If that's the time you need to take two days off, by all means, do so. But 
Otherwise, try to push yourself two reps left in reserve. Push it, plug in your weights, and the weights will automatically plug in for your next workout. That is key. We're doing a simple progression here. So at the end of about two months on this routine, I should easily be able to come back and look at your chest press and see you getting stronger. Maybe you even stayed the same, or perhaps you got weaker. And that lets me know, okay, we may have to pull that exercise out because that's one that their body's no longer responding to. What's going on with it? Let's figure it out. We have some tweaking to do. Otherwise, try to use the exact or machine. So that's going to pretty much be it. So put in the work, try to be consistent. At the end of the day, I could write up the most fantastic and fabulous program in the world for you, and it would, my, would not make one difference. I'll tell you a quick story. Back in the 90s, when I first really started working out, me and my boy, we decided to save up our money. Reading in the old muscle magazines, there was this product called Cybergenics. So some of you may remember, and you know, finally we got hooked in. We kept seeing Cybergenic ads all up in the muscle magazines. So we finally decided to order. Cybergenics came in the mail because you, know, you felt extra special. So Cybergenics came into the mail and the greatest part about Cybergenics was that you received a little doohickey body fat caliper that was like plastic and not much bigger than my hand. And so I am glad I learned how to do skin folds with that. But the other thing I realized about Cybergenics, I don't think the supplements were all that at all. But one of the things that Cybergenics came with was his workout plan. And it had a ton of sets and reps. And so doing that workout plan, I have no idea whether it was beneficial or not. I know after one week, even in my 20s, I was jacked, which tells me, was it really the cybergenic supplements that were working? Or was it the fact that they gave me this workout that I just worked myself to death? And if I wasn't accustomed to that, it's going to cause change. Point being, almost any workout will actually cause some change if you're consistent with it. So be consistent with this. Put the waist down on the sheet. As always, report back to me and we'll adjust, we'll accommodate, we'll nip, we'll tuck. And just like the show, when I ask you, so what don't you like about yourself? Your strength and how you look won't be one of the things that you name. All right, let's get at it. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.